Uh, we all, every single year, hear the story of the Christian young man, Wahab al-Kalbi or Kalabi, who joined the camp of Imam al-Hussein, uh, who became a martyr. Uh, because Imam al-Hussein obviously stands for the truth. Imam al-Hussein was a man who wanted to restore the dignity of everyone in uh, living in, in the Muslim land, including the non-Muslims under the protection of Islam. Imam Ali dedicates an entire sermon called to jihad, to the concept of jihad, and it is entitled Khutbatul Jihad. So for those who want to look it up, uh, it's a pretty long sermon. Uh, you can look it up on Google and read the whole thing. There is a very interesting part in that sermon that says, uh, you know, I called on to you uh, in the summer and you said it's too hot. I called on to you in the winter and you said it's too cold. And now the troops of Muawiyah had entered uh, Al-Ambar, which is a part of Iraq. وَقَدْ قَتَلُوا وَالِيَهَا حَسَانِ بِنْ حَسَانِ And they have killed its, uh, its governor. وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ مِنْهُمْ And the troops يَدْخُلُ عَلَى الْمَرْأَ الْمُسْلِمَةِ وَأُخْرَ الْمُعَاهَدَةِ And he enters onto the women who are Muslim and the Mu'ahada, who are from Ahl al-Kitab, the Christians and the Jews who uh, were living in, in that city, the city of Ambar, or, or the surroundings, or whatever uh, you, was prior to, to Damascus and, and Ambar. Uh, and what do they do? They strip them away from their jewelry. They take their earrings and their necklaces. And those Muslim women, a non-Muslim woman under the protection of Islam, then they start crying and weeping. And then Imam Ali says, if a man, if a Muslim man, وَلَوْ أَنَّ رَجُلًا مُسْلِمًا مَاتَ مِنْ بَعْدِ هَذَا أَسَفَ لَمَا كَانَ عَنْدِي مَلُومًا If he were to die out of sorrow and depression, because he knows that a Muslim woman and a non-Muslim woman were attacked, and they, they took their jewelry from them, if he were to die from depression and sorrow after hearing this, I would not blame him. This was the concept of jihad in the school of Ali, to protect the weak, to protect the impoverished, to make sure that there is justice uh, for all. Um, and Imam Ali, obviously following the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad, never limited any uh, uh, leaders of any other groups to propagate uh, in fact, you know, God speaks of the protection of the houses of worship in the Holy Quran. Um, and here comes, uh, you know, this this caliph who sits in, in, in the position of the Prophet Muhammad, who does not even give amnesty to the grandson of the Prophet himself. And Imam Hussein's movement was to restore this dignity, uh, to make sure that Islam's spirit is back in its body. There is a body now, but the spirit has left. The ruh of this Islam is gone. It was dead. It was going to a very dangerous place. So Hussein made sure he revives uh, the, 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 the soul of Islam or revives Islam. And that's exactly why the Prophet says, Hussein and Minni wa ana min Hussein. Hussein's from me and I am from Hussein. So Wahab, I'm sure he was motivated by by such principles and I'm sure that he was awakened by the call of Hussein he joined the camp of Hussein he became a martyr until today all over the Muslim world all over every single majlis that take millions of majlis that take place around the world in the first 10 days of Muharram Wahab is honored and uh, and he's honored as the Christian man who joined the army of Imam Hussein if you specifically, Father, if you were present on the 10th of Muharram in Karbala and you heard Hussein stand and say, Is there anybody to come to our rescue? Is there anybody to uh, stand with us? What would you do? I, you know, I, I like to think that I would have been 
given at that moment the necessary courage, because an, a certain courage is needed. And Hussein and the men who were with him and the woman too, they had a, a courageousness about them because, look, death and, and war and the infliction of suffering is a frightening thing for most people, no matter how close they may be to God. There are still things that we don't eagerly embrace. And therefore, you know, one of the things that strikes me about about Hussein and especially some of the younger members of the Ahlbeit who went out to fight with their uncle or to fight side by was the extraordinary courage. Now, part of that courage comes from the fact of knowing you are on the side of truth and on the side of God, but it still needs courage. I would hope that, you know, I, I think that each of us has our own daily Karbala moments. We, we have them where we have to make a stand that's going to make us unpopular, even some small moral choice or we have to face a temptation and say, absolutely not, I will not give in to this. So I think we have our Karbala moments, and they do take a certain kind, especially if our moral choices are going to make us unpopular. I would, I would like to think that had I been present and heard the call of al Hussein to rally around him, that I would have had the courage to do it, because I would have recognized justice and truth, as did... Uh, you know, Wahab, the, the, the Christian, and I think his wife as well, I think she was also um, present. Um, so, so I like to think that. But I, having said that, I like to, to also think that wherever the Husseinian voice is heard today, calling people to do what is just, no matter how unpopular it makes you or how dangerous it may be, to be prepared to say what has to be said, no matter how much effort that will take, that's the Husseinian voice, the Husseinian model as against the Yazid model. And we have to choose which model we're going to follow. I, I would hope that however I hear that voice, whether it is in the reading of the Christian texts or the preaching of the Christian ministers or the preaching of, of many of the Muslims who I know well and whose sermons I listen to, that I would be ready to respond to that voice and say, yes, I will, I will tell the truth, hard as it's going to be, or I will stand for the truth even though this is going to cost me a great deal, my reputation, my all kinds of things. I know that in the academic world, sometimes people lose their position because they tell the truth, hard as it is. We have to be prepared to do that because as I say, without truth, we might as well have a hand that has no nerves in it and we don't stand a chance. I, I pray that that would be my response. You know, um... I'm certainly not surprised. I, I'm pleased. But uh, I'd like to just, and this obviously has to continue in another discussion, uh, the role of the Christian men that surrounded Imam al Hussein and most importantly, after his martyrdom. Because uh, after his martyrdom, we find that there was a huge role. You know, and, and like you just said, some of them endangered their lives. Endangered well, there is the famous, the famous Byzantine diplomat who comes to the court of Yazid, and Yazid is having a great drinking party around, um, around the head of Hussein, I think. Possibly no longer the head of Hussein, but he's having a drinking party. And the diplomat who is from, from Byzantium, from Rome, so not Rome, but real Byzantium, and he's a Christian, he says, who, what are you celebrating? Who have you killed? And, who, and Yazid becomes very suspicious. He says, why, why do you want to know? And he says, well, when I go back, I want to tell them everything about the wonderful things you've done. And he's, a very, he's a very sly diplomat. So Yazid tells him what he's done. And the diplomat says, are you talking about the son of Fatima? Is that who you've killed? And he then turns on Yazid and gives them this famous lecture about the, the church of the hoof. It's a, it's a very interesting hadith about a church in which the hoof of the donkey on which Isa once rode is venerated by the Christians. And he said, can you imagine? They venerate the hoof of a donkey on which Isa sat, and you, you've killed the son of Fatima. And, and, then, and then he says, the prophet came to me in my dreams last night and gives this diplomat a message. And the diplomat then converts to Islam and at that moment is killed by Yazid because Yazid says, we better kill him, otherwise he's gonna go back and tell his people about what we've done. So it is a 
a classic story of a Christian, and there, there are other versions of the same story, a Christian who challenges Yazid based on the fact of, 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 of the way the Christians venerate even something that Isa touched, and here you are, killing the very son, the blood of the prophet himself. Um, so yes, I know that there are some very interesting texts available. Um, there's, you know, there's, uh, also, what, yeah, there's, in one of the cities, uh, and I, I'd like to think that you know this was towards uh, the Levant when they were taking the heads of Imam Al Hussein. They reach uh, a city, and and you know those guys were fighting over the head of Imam Al Hussein, making sure that the person who takes it. Uh, gets the biggest reward. Uh, you know, he takes the head and he says, fill my pockets with gold and silver for I have beheaded the best of the best, the best of the men. Uh, I'm sure you've come across this line of poetry. Yes. One yeah. night, because they wanted to make sure that they you know, they, they protect the head uh, from, from others stealing it, basically, this treasure that they had. They take it to, a, 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 basically, a Catholic church. A monastery. A monastery. To a monastery. And today, you know, there is a picture in Karbala, in the shrine of Imam al-Hussein, that is displayed only from the morning of the, the 10th of Muharram until noontime. Um, and I personally have not had the honor to be there uh, for, in that period in Karbala ever uh, because I'm always lecturing uh, in that period. Uh, but I am told that it is, it is something out of this world. I am told it, uh, it combines uh, the light of, of Hussein. Uh, it combines the fact that he was content, yet he was, you know, full of blood and, 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 in that horrible state and uh, once you look at it you just simply cannot hold yourself uh, that was the painting of uh, the priest who had actually taken the time to uh, to draw to us for us uh, the head of Imam al Hussein the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad uh, while it was his guest if you were to visit one of the holy shrines of the Muslims, where would it be and why? Well, this is quite a difficult one.